So this is my review of Being There by Jerzy Kosinski. And before I start, I'd just like to let you guys know that my computer's been having a lot of troubles lately. Um, I've gotten the blue screen of death like five times in the past week. And any day now, it's just going to croak. And the only way I have to make videos at that point is by, um, through this cheap little camera on my laptop. So, um, we'll see how that goes. But, um, if it comes to that point, I'll probably just buy a webcam for my Mac, and then I can start making some real high-quality videos. So, if you see me go a couple of weeks without making any videos, um, don't think I abandoned you. So, um, alright. Being there. Now, this is a really short book. How many pages was it? Yeah, it's a bit over 100 pages. Um... And it's a pretty simple concept, but it's really entertaining concept at the same time. Basically, this guy named Chance is mildly mentally retarded, and um, he becomes extremely famous just by luck, hence his name Chance. Basically, he started out as a gardener in this large mansion, and um, the owner of the mansion, titled only as the old man, only kept him there, he didn't pay him or anything, he just kept him there so he wouldn't get sent to an asylum. And he sometimes uh, mildly threatened to, but um, otherwise he just led a peaceful life, tending to a garden. And um, that was basically all he wanted. He, so he worked on this garden, and he watched TV. He couldn't read or anything, and when I say he's mildly retarded, he's not like, it's not terribly noticeable, he just seems a bit dim. So that's why he ended up being so successful. Now, um, the old man died, and then just by luck, he was, well, you could call it luck, he was hit by a limousine, and this woman, E, came out, her name is E, and, um, where's it pronounced, E, E, two E's in a row, I called her E. Anyway, uh, she brought him back to her house, and she was also extremely rich, because they live in a wealthy area of the city. And, um, when asked about politics, Chauncey, or yeah, Chance, whose name became Chauncey, because, uh, she asked him his name and he said Chance, and somehow she thought he said Chauncey. So, uh, anyway, his name became Chauncey Gardener, um, after he said Chance the Gardener. Um, so anyway, Chauncey, or Chance, whichever you prefer to call him, uh, when asked about politics, would make references to the garden, of course being the garden he tended to back at the mansion. And it sounded extremely deep and political, and it seemed to fit in just right with any situation. And so people thought he was some kind of amazing political mastermind, and he was introduced to the president, the president loved him, and then he went on this talk show and stepped in for the vice president, because the vice president couldn't make it. And basically, in three days, I believe, he became uh, one of the most famous men in the country. And toward the end of the novel, he's um, people are talking about maybe having him as the next candidate for president. Um, I forget if it was the Democrats or Republicans. but um, And then at the end, he goes back to the mansion, and he just sort of walks back into the garden. Which was interesting, because it's a bit of a cliffhanger, but you can sort of assume that he just stayed there. And no one knew what happened to this Chauncey Gardener. But, um, it was really entertaining. There were a lot of, like, really funny scenes where someone would ask him a question, and then he would just calmly be like, I have no idea what you were talking about. And I can, like, just picture him and everything. And, um, it was a good one-day read. I read this in, like, one sitting. It was pretty awesome. So, um, if you haven't read this yet, well... Yeah, if you haven't read this yet, I would definitely go for it, but if you haven't read it yet, I've also just ruined the ending for you, but I guess I do that in every video. Alright, the next book we're going to read is Airborne by Kenneth Apple. And Airborne, and that's spelled without the E at the end, um, you know, as in someone born in the air, Airborne is a steampunk novel. Steampunk means basically a world where steam power is more common than electricity, and there are tons of airships and everything. It's basically my favorite genre of sci-fi. But, um, anyway, Airborne, as I recall, I read it a year ago, is basically your perfect adventure. It was like, it seemed like a summer adventure movie. It was just like, 
sort of predictable, sort of cheesy, but um, it was extremely suspenseful and the plot went really smoothly and it was great writing style. The thing that I remember that stood out for me was how extremely believable the characters were. Um, the two main characters being Kate DeVry and Matt Cruz are just so real. They, like, you feel like you could just walk into the book and talk to them as if you've known them your whole life because they're such real, rich characters. And um, that's basically the reason why I love this series so much. Um, the second book is also out, Skybreaker. And as of a month or two ago, the third book is out, Star Climber. And um, Skybreaker, the second one, I think was actually better than the first by this much. But, um, so the plot basically follows Matt Cruz is the main character. It's written in the first person. And he's on this airship, I believe it's called the Aurora. And it's just like a, a giant flying hotel, basically. And then this girl, Kate DeVry, comes on, and, you know, naturally he becomes interested in her, and they become friends and everything. And then the ship crash lands on an island, um, because they were shot down by pirates, I believe. Air pirates, that is. Um, when I say pirates, it's not like the cliche pirates with swords, but, um, I mean, sure, they're still, like, a little rough seeming, but they're not, uh, it's not too cheesy. I mean, when I say it's cheesy, I just mean that it's fairly predictable at times, and otherwise, though, it was, it was just such a fantastic book. Um, so, next week I can't make a video, and the week after that, I can't make a video. So, I'm going to give you guys three weeks to read this book. Although, judging from the comments, none of you guys have actually read the books. But, um, whatever. I'm not really wasting my time since I have plenty of spare time as it is. So, if you feel like reading it, this is the book to read out of any of the ones that I've mentioned. This is just, well, assuming you're, like, a teenager. Otherwise, it might seem a little young for you. It's probably a little young for me, but I still love that series. So, um, that's about it for today. Sorry, my, uh, reviews. So vague and brief, but this is a, a vague and brief book. So, um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in three weeks.